Yes, and welcome to another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. Tonight, it's the 10th of January, 2013, and the CES is almost done. Yes, if you have been living under a rock, you wouldn't have heard about it. But yes, we'll, we'll tell you what the CES is. If Just in case you don't know what it is, we'll tell you what it is later on and what has come out of it in previous years. So welcome to the show, Aussie Tech Heads. I'm Glenn, and we're going to talk about what's been happening in the tech news world uh, this week. You know, bring you up to speed, uh, predominantly focusing on Australian stories, but uh, also around the world, hence CES in Las Vegas somewhere, Nevada, wherever that is, US, wherever that is. All right, now the, the podcast no, it's is... in a desert somewhere. It is, that's out there, it's sand, lots of sand. Now, Aussie Tech Heads is brought yeah. to you by the Aussie Tech Heads hosting, hosting team, and they've got fast, affordable hosting services that's right so if you're looking for hosting whether it be personal or commercial you've got a business you need a web page give us a call go or just go to the uh, the web page aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting pick out a plan and if you get stuck send me an email and we'll help you out all right now welcome lounge to the lounge at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live so welcome to those guys there they join us live for the live recording every thursday night so good on you. Now, just before the show, at around about 7 p.m., we have the replay of techwebcast.info. Great show. Go and check them out, the techwebcast.info, or join us at the aussietechheads.com.au forward slash live for the replay at 7 o'clock Queensland time each Thursday night. Now, the video of the show, this one that the lounge is watching right now, is recorded and can be seen and downloaded by you at, at the uh, front of the webpage, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash, I don't know, something. Just, just do that, aussietechheads.com.au. I haven't done the podcast one yet. It's something else. But anyway, do that. Yeah. Um, what else is there? <laughs> There's a, look, if you, you're on Twitter, everyone's on Twitter. Hey, come on. Now, you can just you want tech news in your Twitter stream? Come on, just get in there. Uh, follow at Aussie Tech News and uh, little, two little gems will pop in just around about every half hour if there's something there. And the paper, the Aussie Tech Head paper. Uh, where's that? AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash paper, maybe. So you can try that. Get that on your iPad. It's not just tech stories. It's, uh, oh, it's everything. Humanitarian stories. I don't know. Whatever whatever gets out. Whatever's out there, they categorize, and it's, it's all put together. Nice and neat, you know. It's great. All right. Well, we better get on with the show. We're going to introduce you to the, the guys tonight. Eric is unavailable tonight, this week and next week. So um, he, we will see him in a couple of weeks. But tonight we have... Shane and Will. So first of all, Will, how are you this week, my boy? Ah, uh, rather warm. It's uh. Now you've had some. Well, uh, <clears throat> you've had some hot weather up there near uh, Ippy. I've heard it's been getting up to about forty. Yeah, yesterday got to forty three. Um, today got to about forty six, forty seven. I think it peaked at. Mm. Um, and it's currently about 45 in my computer room. 45? Jeez. It's like yeah. on, like Santa Court. <laughs> <laughs> that's warm, isn't it? So, yeah, it's a bit, uh, that's actually the biggest killer is the humidity because mm. there are storms around within, you know, a couple hundred Ks. So the humidity is really high and yeah. that's what's, uh, what's making it difficult. Yeah. Uh, <clears> yeah. <throat> so we were going to come up. There's a, uh, Thomas, the tank engine expose. On up, but I think is it at like mm-hmm. Ipswich Rail Yard or somewhere? Is that what it's called? I don't know. Yeah, every school holidays they do that. Yeah, so we were going to go up there on uh, this weekend, but I think it's going to be a bit hot. We looked at the weather and it was going to be like uh, forty. It, it <laughs> is, it's but it's not too bad because there's usually a breeze, and for the most part, you're you're undercover there anyway. So it's it's actually not too horrible. Yeah. I actually went to it last year. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went. I think it was last year or the year before, something like that. But yeah, it was good. So if you're in... Uh, yeah, but you've got kids. <laughs> if, if, you're in, if you're in Queensland and you're southern, southeast Queensland, go up to Ippy and go and have a look at Thomas. They've got the fat controller. They've got everyone. It's great. It's good. Um, that was me. No. Oh, was that you? Was that you? <laughs> That's your weekend job. <laughs> now, That's what Santa Claus does when he's not delivering presents. <laughs> <laughs> now, just before we, we get over to Shane, uh, I do want to say hi to the, everyone who is um, listening and maybe going through some bushfire uh, dramas. So uh, those guys down in Tassie, so hi. Um, Frosty, hope you're, hope you're well. Hope you're staying cool and out of the fires. And everyone else down there in Tassie, uh, it's... Um, I mean... Not even in Tassie now. The bush fire, you, there's a bushfire map you can look up on the net, and uh, just the outbreaks of fires all over Australia at the moment is mad. Mm. So we've got heat waves going on in half of Australia. You've got half of Tasmania on fire, and then the half's got snow. 
you've got uh, a cyclone forming off the coast of Western Australia. Crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff. All right, well, let's let's find out what is happening over there in, in uh, sunny Western Australia. How are you doing, Shane? I'm doing well. A bit Good. Um, chaotic. You know, it was a, um, you know, it wasn't the preparation that I wanted for the show, but we made it. You got there, and and so what is forming? Is there cyclones forming over over in the west? What is going oh, on? Oh yeah, but I mean that happens every year, so it's nothing we're not used to. Right. Um, it's going to be a category four by Saturday, they reckon. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but it, I mean, obviously down in Perth, we don't really get to feel much of it. If anything, it makes it hotter for us because the um the heat trough kind of comes further down the coast. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. So uh, also, everyone's uh, struggling with the heat. So um, we, we, we'll, we'll get into the show. Take your mind off it. All right, well, first of all, Shane, what's happened this week in tech history? Uh, just give me a second. <laughs> well, I can I tell you. expect you to kick <laughs> off with me. <laughs> I was right. actually going to send you a chat to say, do Will first. <laughs> all, all right, right. I, I, can tell you, I can tell you. We'll start with uh, January 3rd. January 9th. I've got it in front of me. All right, go with that one. All right, so January 9th, astronomer sees ashen light of Venus. Uh, now I'll just click on the link. Let's find out exactly what that's about. I think it's something to do with kind of the aurora, the, the kind of glow kind of thing. Um, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, 1943, Italian astronomer Giovanni Shelley. I'm sure he did something the other week in this segment. Um, discovers a faint glow on the uh, night side of the planet Venus. Good on him. Other astronomers uh, over the ensuing centuries will also observe the Asian light. So it's kind of like an aurora kind of thing. Now, next one here we've got. I was <laughs> watching a. I was watching a guy. I was watching this guy just last night in a show on. Uh, I recorded it from SBS. I forget what the show was called now. But um, Stephen Hawking. Now, what happened? January eight, chain nineteen. Same as Elvis. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah, yeah, it is too. Um, birthday of um, Stephen Hawking, British um, physicist, uh, was born on January 8th, 1942. Wow, well, wow. Well. And um, as most of us all know, he's gone on to be one of the most brilliant minds of, um, well, of all time, really. Mm. Um, he's, um, he's, he's wheelchair-bound. He has a, a disability that basically... Um, it's a physical disability of his mind's right, and I'm, I'm trying to think of the name Mus- of it. And that's that's what, muscular, what bit... muscular dystrophy, no? Yeah, yeah something be, similar yeah. to that. But he butchers um, himself anyway, around with you, a... Yeah, he can't talk, yeah. talk through the computer, all that sort of stuff. Uh, now, what have you got there? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, no. uh, actually, um, just, just quickly on that too, some of the main, major technology we use, medical technology, to help people in that situation has been developed, or he's developed. Um, things like you know the, the mobile wheelchair and the way you can control it and uh, about a neuron disease. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the chat room. Uh, and things like now, he's also got a little eye. He's actually got, in his glasses, he's got a little eye scanner, laser scanner, that actually looks at his retina. And depending on where he moves his eye, it depends on how the, what the chair does and what letters yeah, he types. It's, it's and, amazing, isn't it? It's great. So it's amazing. It's great. And, uh, and also another, another birthday, January 4th, Louis Braille. No, no guessing what he, um, what he invented. Vincent. Yeah, there's actually two blokes that were born on this day that were pretty famous. Louis Braille invented the Braille lettering or writing system for the blind, and Isaac Pittman invented shorthand that obviously secretaries and the like kind of use. Oh, well, there you go. I don't know. Never, never been able to read shorthand, so that doesn't really. Uh, my my mum learnt that. She was a a uh, what do they call them? Um, Sectarist. Not a dictator. <laughs> like a dictator, but not a dictator. Yeah. Um, she got on the dictaphone. <laughs> that's it. She, like loved, and, uh, she loved the dictaphone. And she was also, uh, she was also a, uh, what they call what they call them, peg girls, whatever they were. I used to work at the exchanges and push all the peg, all the oh, phone lines yeah. in there. Yeah, but yeah, right. yep. she uh, learnt, she had shorthand down pat and it was really annoying sometimes. She'd write a quick note on the stick to the fridge or whatever and she'd forget that she's writing a shorthand and yeah. I'd walk up to the fridge and look at the fridge and go squiggly line smiley face yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> what's going on here she might have been the inventor of the emoticon 
You know, someone stole it from <laughs> underneath her. No. <laughs> All right. And uh, you got, you got, there's one more there. January 3rd, 1957, Electric Watch debuts. A Space Age Marvel. Wow. Yes, that's pretty Good. much it, really. The, um, yeah, the Electric Watch right? debuted at the World Fair, I think it was. Of course. Space Age Marvel, yeah. It um, debuted at the, the World's Fair. Now, speaking of world fairs, everyone, as I said, has heard of the CES. Now, it is, I don't know, it's, what is it? The Consumer Electronic Show. That's Show. what it is. Now, it goes every mm. year, and it's been going for quite some time. It uh, goes every year from January 8 to January 11 this year. Um, it Now, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, you know, Commonwealth Employment Service, you know, all that sort of stuff, but it's not. It's for, for decades. Now, it, the first show was in 1967 in New York with just 14 exhibitors. It was a sp- and as a spin-off from the Chicago Music Show. So there you go. Now, Las Vegas, Nevada is where it's held last year, attracting 156,000 visitors. Now, that is a few, let me tell you, 156,000. Now, I think I might have just have a little picture here just for, for use on the... For use, just for use on the videos. Now, um, uh, now some of the things that have been launched at the CES and that have made it big. Now, th- I'll just go through a couple of little fellas. 1971, the 8-track. Who hasn't seen an 8-track, eh? Oh, beautiful. Uh, Will, you'd have one of them laying around your yard, wouldn't you? Actually, well, I don't have a working 8-track. I've got one. I've got a heap of tape still. Yeah, right. I actually used to use it, though, for a... Uh, um, Soundboard, like, used to have all the sound bites and stuff on them. Yeah, okay. Cassettes, uh, what do they call them? Yeah. So, 19... remember the, uh, like, the little talking robot, the bear thing? He was an 8-track. Right. <laughs> no, I don't remember. There was a all. robot and a bear. They were, like, read-along things. Yeah, and that okay. noise PA, just in case anybody was interesting, was uh, Shane's keyboard that is belting to death with a sledgehammer. I think, Shane, you might have your <laughs> wrong mic on or something. Tap, tap your mic, Shane. Yep, that's not no, on. I've done the thing where it's topped again. Yeah. Yep. All right, now... Did the... I mute? Sorry? Should I muted it? Oh, Wait, tap can it now. you still hear me again, yeah? Tap it now. Yeah, that's yeah. No, it's just when you're typing. It's just really loud. Mm-hmm. Anyway, but other... Oh, there's... <laughs> yeah, here's one here that I thought is was... Uh, was, was Quite early, the laser disc, 1974. You know, geez, that's that's a while ago. Other things, 75, the Atari Home Pong console. What a stinker of a game that was. Uh, first, was cheap... the laser disc 74? Really? Yeah, yeah that's when. Wow. Well, you know, it, yeah, I know. That's what I mean. Like, but you know, it takes a while for these things to hit mainstream, and in that case, probably 20 years. <laughs> well, I was going to say because like mid 90s, I bought a laser disc player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That'd be about right. Um, I think we all owned probably a, a TV game. I had a in television. Others probably Atari was very popular. The, what other the compact disc? Nineteen eighty one. There you go. Nineteen eighty two. The Commodore sixty four. Eighty five. Nintendo uh, Entertainment System. Ninety three. The Mini Disc. What a flop that one was. That wasn't bad. I remember Mark had a Mini Disc uh, player. Well, that, that, they were quite good. It wasn't so much that. <clears throat> Um, it wasn't so much that um, it was a flop. Like a lot of the Chinese and Japanese markets really flogged it. A lot of cars were released with it, uh, and it, it ended up. Well, anything Sony had a mini disc player in it, and mm. it ended up becoming a data disc as well. It was a fantastic concept. It was just one of those things that never took off. Yeah. So uh, look, Sony's Sony. I think just invents all these things, beat Betamax and all this sort of stuff. But for some reason, they well, just look don't at the Walkman. Off. They just. Oh, they smashed this year, it. end of last year, mm. stopped making all That's right. They smashed <laughs> it with that thing. I have, I've got two around here somewhere still. They probably still work. <laughs> I'll put batteries in them. Um, 1990. Yeah, sorry, Will. I was going to say, it's still a matter of finding a pencil that fits. It's getting harder and harder to find. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, what else? DVD, 1996. So, that, so these are, this yep. is the, some of the things that have come out of the CES over the years. Uh, the TiVo, 99. The Xbox 2001, Blu-ray 2004, OLED TV 2008, and 3D TV 2009, which I believe might have had, a, had its final curtain as well. People, 3D TV's not going anywhere. I think that's, no. from what I've heard, it's, it's it, cactus. It was never really going to be a consumer-oriented product. I mean, yeah, it's a gimmick, but the people, and I, I actually know two of my friends spent ridiculous amounts of money and bought them, and they used them for the first 
Hour. <laughs> yeah. you know, and then yeah. you know, one of the glasses would break or the batteries would go flat or you know, and they just don't use it anymore. You know, maybe they get a heap of friends together once every six months, you know. It's, for mm. the price they paid for it, it just wasn't worth it. And, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you can still buy them. There's a, you know, the market's still full of them. But I think they've hit their saturation point. Everybody who's going to buy one pretty much has. Mm. Now, um, yeah, so that's some of the things. Now, I know some of the got, uh, Shane's got a couple of stories of what else has been what else has been unveiled, or you know, uh, from this year's CES. So we'll get to that. We'll get to a couple of those soon. But I, look, I've got one here as well. Um, there's the first one terabyte USB flash drive. How's that? One terabyte. Seven thousand dollars. <laughs> yes, I'll have two, please. <laughs> Now, the world's <laughs> first one terabyte drive, USB 3 device, it's likely to cost more than most computers do, and as you just heard, Will has said seven grand. <laughs> the company no, said... Was just to get, I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. No, well, you're probably not far wrong. The company said uh, it's... Uh, so, who's bringing this out? Kingston. The, the Data Traveller HyperX Predator will go on sale <laughs> this quarter, and it's for users who work with large video graphic files. Oh, Really? Or gamers <laughs> who think, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I just was just going to run MAME on it. That's what I want my word files. <laughs> yes. I'm just going to put Pong on it. Now, um, <laughs> Kingston has already launched a 512 gig version, which is currently available for the bargain basement price of US 1337 so, I don't know, double that and add a bit more on and you'll be able to get your terabyte one. So, USB 3, so look, that'll come down in price, but that's good, you know, that's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, it will. But I was actually having this conversation with somebody today, uh, another computer tech friend of mine, and I was just saying to him, I found my old um, 32 meg thumb drive, you know, right. and I remember when that came out, it was, a, it was a Kingston one, and when it came out, it was 200 and something bucks. Mm. So, so other things that have been um, unveiled this year at the show. Just quickly, Shane, have you got any? You had a couple of things, didn't you? That was unveiled. No. Well, maybe yes. will. Maybe <laughs> yes, will. Have. Yes, I did. Yes, no, I did. I'm trying to juggle. Um, I got a call from work. I put it in the chat, but obviously hadn't seen oh, it. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't watch that chat. <laughs> you need but a little yeah, sign. Just off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the. I'll quickly do the um the Wi-Fi rifle one. Okay. As soon as I get my mobile, I'll just shut up. You right? Uh, you, you a can... US firm has unveiled a Wi-Fi enabled Magnum that uh, talks to smartphone apps and uploads shooting data uh, to Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's called Trackpoint, uh, an applied technology company based in Austin, Texas, launched. Uh, what is likely to be a controversial adaption of technology adaptation, even of technology at the Consumer Electronics Show, at the Showstoppers, which is like a pre-show event. Um, it basically it's just a regular rifle, but it um, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot, and um, it like I said, it, it talks to your smartphone via a um, an app. Um, I'm guessing they'll bring out an iPhone one first. And it automatically um, posts your, you know, your score, how well you kind of did, what you were shooting at, how far away it was. Nice. Um, they, they love their guns, that, though. Um, every terrorist wants to know. Exactly. Yeah. You, I mean, you I'm Americans love your guns. Did launch it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised they launched it on on the back of the um, yeah, the latest shooting over there. But mm. anyway. Yeah. I was well, just going to help them with their accuracy. Well, if you want to see yeah. um, you want to see how passionate the gun lobby is, uh, go on YouTube. A Pierce, Pierce Morgan interview with some dude, some shock jock, I think, who represented the gun lobby, I think. But yeah, this guy just, I don't know, you know everyone know, does everyone know who Piers Morgan is? He's a UK journalist, gone to the US, he's now doing his own show over there. He, I think he's on Foxtel over here. And uh, yeah, this guy, I watched part one of it, it's up on YouTube, two parts, watched part one of it. 
poor Pierce, he couldn't he couldn't get a word in. The guy was going crazy at him. <laughs> he was very passionate about didn't want you know the, the guns to be taken away from the the citizens. There, there was going to be a revolt, another civil war if this was to happen. Oh, it's it's, it's going to get probably a lot worse than that before before something happens. I'll tell you, but I don't know. It worked over here, and Pierce, where has what the thing he was coming from was worked over in England. So uh, we'll, well, I suppose it doesn't work over here. You look at statistics of gun sh- gunshots, and it hasn't really changed. Yeah, but it's it's come down. Bugger all. No, nah, it's come down. It's not come down. not for the amount of thing they did. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Yeah. All right, now uh, something else that coming that's coming out of the show. Some electric car. Is was oh did that come out of the show? No, no Toyota and Audi. What was that one, Shane? Oh, are you at work uh, again? Yeah, okay. Are you still at work? Uh, trying to. But that's all oh, right. Okay, no, well, look, look. If you're if you got work to do, um, I'll move on to something else. That's all right. That's all right. You go and um, yeah. put your. How about when you when you're not available, <laughs> put your headphones off, yeah. and then I can see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right cool. No worries. All right. Cool. Now, uh, look. I've got a little. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a little story here from. Uh, oh, Will, have you got these stories? Sorry. Yeah. Well, what there was one electric car story I had. Uh, it wasn't really about uh, the car per se, but they're trying to mandate again, and this is like the third time it's happened now, they're trying to mandate uh, the cars have to make a noise below 30 kilometres an hour. Um, some already do, so like the Nissan Leaf, things like that. Once you're below 30 kilometres an hour, they sort of have a bit of a hum so you can hear them coming. Coming. Um, and but you can stop it with the push of a button to turn the noise off. So if you're like driving up your driveway or something, it doesn't annoy you. Um, but yeah, they're trying to make it mandated so that basically they're concerned about um, visually impaired pedestrians and, and things like that, or even people. You know, you think you're walking, <clears throat> and I actually had this happen the other day because I deal with a lot of taxi companies for batteries. Uh, I was carrying batteries, and as I went to step out. I was carrying a couple of batteries, walked beside my truck, and as I've gone to step out behind my truck, a Prius went past. Hmm. So, and I was inside a shed, and there was no ambient noise, and I still couldn't hear this thing coming. So, I, I kind of understand what they're saying. Um, as long as it's something that's, obviously, it's got to be able to be turned off, and it's got to be something that won't be incredibly annoying. And to be honest, you don't want it that loud, because then you're just adding to the noise pollution. So... Can't they put um, um what's the go with tires? Because I know you can buy certain tires, like because like we bought tires for our car, and they said if you buy those tires, they're going to be really noisy. But they were cheap, so we bought yeah. them, and they were really noisy. That's right. <laughs> that's, right. But that's, that's that's uh, just an entirely different uh, problem. That's you don't want that because that's just going to annoy the drivers at a hundred. Mm. Um, but basically, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's it's not that hard matter really of putting set of speakers around it and just have sort of a a low you know noise like even a machinery noise you would expect like a you know you walk into an industrial factory and you hear just a general machinery yeah, noise yeah. there's nothing specific it's just sort of a uh, or even white noise white noise is actually a very good noise in so far as you can actually pinpoint where it's coming from uh, a lot of reversing beepers for example just randomly make a noise and you can't actually tell where it's coming from because the sound bounces off everything yeah, yeah. but uh the white noise they're called there's a company called back alarm that actually makes white noise reversing beepers and they're fantastic you can act, as soon as it's activated you can hear exactly where it's coming from so maybe a a, a low volume version of that might be the way to go mm. oh, look when i i first read this story and i thought Oh, you know, that's no good. Like, why? Why would you want to make try and make noise? But, uh, but then listening to Will's um, his experience there, you know, you, you would if you can't hear something coming, you're not as care- like you're not as um, aware. Mm. I, I would imagine, like, you know, if, yeah, because we're all used mm. to sounds of the road. You know, we're all used to. Oh, I can hear a car coming, even in the car park. You know, when they're just crawling along, well, you can well, hear them. And um, part of the problem is too. Because they're trying to keep the efficiency so high in the vehicle, they have ultra low resistance tyres and things like that. So even the tyre sound when they're turning doesn't happen. They don't squeal in car parks. There's none of that general ambient noise you would expect aside from the motor. You know, they're just so quiet. So I think that you're probably right. There probably should be some type of noise. Yes, yes. But especially if something's going sixty k's an hour, you want to you want to be yeah. able to hear it. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's, that's good. That's good. I've changed my mind. 
Reformed. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, look, getting back to a um, bit more of a techie story. Uh, Kogan, he's at it again. He's, he, loves, he loves getting he in is. this news cycle, doesn't he? He loves it. Now, yeah. and, and a new word, a new word that I haven't seen before and which has apparently been coming out uh, at the CES. Well, I haven't heard of it before. Uh, Will probably, he's got his head stuck in podcasts every second of the day. He's probably heard it. But it's a fablet. Is that a, that, a fablet? A, well, that's what mine fablet. is. Yes. My Galaxy Note 2 is a fablet. Now, a fablet is the in between y <laughs> sizes, isn't it? Bigger than yeah. a phone, so smaller than a pad. Basically, f- probably four and a half, or f- yeah, four and a half to probably six inch around there. Yeah. Now, yeah, what's Kogan done, you might ask? Kogan, he's, he's jumped on the fablet bandwagon. He's going to introduce a $149 smartphone. It's got to be going to be good, isn't it? Now, Kogan Technology has launched a budget 5-inch machine, a phablet, running Android mm. ice cream sandwich. Uh, as I said, price $149. Now, this is an Agora 5-inch dual-core smartphone. Well, they're calling it a smartphone there, yep. so no one knows one, what they one, are. One gigahertz, <laughs> one gigahertz dual-core processors with the uh, A9 processor, which is the, the pretty powerful uh, A-chip, so... So the, the um, phone is available to order now, shipping in February. So, look, apparently they're going to be unlocked, uh, so that's good. And it's compatible yep. with 3G networks. Uh, it's a 5-inch WVGA touchscreen, so apparently the resolution is not as good as, as others. Well, it's 800 by 480, so that's for a 5-inch screen, it's starting to get a little bit low, but it's still perfectly acceptable. Um, my s- cheap... Pando pad only has that resolution on the seven inch screen, so and it's fine. Now, now, so, how's, how's this one for a feature? Connectivity options include two separate SIM slots. It's all right. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. Inbuilt Bluetooth. Yep. So you can have, if you go out west, you can throw a Telstra prepaid in it, and if you're just around the city, you can use Optus or whoever. So. So that's not handy for international roaming too. Yep. Yes, that's true. And welcome back. Now it's. Uh, and it's <laughs> A 3.1 millimeter audio jack, blah, blah, blah. Microsoft micro yep. SD card slot. Uh, but ice cream sandwich, Will. Ice cream yep. sandwich. 4.04, that's fine. Yep. That's <clears throat> that's what you want. You, you certainly don't want anything early. Though. The SS 4.1, 4.2, whatever right now. But anything 4 and up is, is going to be sufficient. Um, and updates probably wouldn't be that hard because it is actually vanilla Android. It's not anybody's version of it. So it'll be very easy to... Uh, to update that, uh, of course, it has Wi-Fi, um, Bluetooth, uh, GPS, all that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it it can't to look at looks like a slightly larger version of the Galaxy S two right. uh, yeah. or even S three. Really, it's just it looks the screen is slightly larger than that because I think that's four point six or something. So it's it's a little bit bigger, but not much. Mm. Um, but you know what? The like- five megapixel camera. For 150 bucks, seriously. Exactly. It would be a perfect kids' tablet or a first phone. Yeah. Uh, a school phone, and because it is Android, it's very easy to lock down. So if you want to give it to your kid, you can put apps on it. You can put an app called Find My Droid, where you can text Find, and it will send you back mm. a, a message with the location. Yep. Uh, nice. You can put lockdown software on it, so they can only ring Grandma and you and the school, for example, and the police. You know, so you can, they can only call those, same as they can only text certain people. Uh, you can put apps on it, but you can restrict what apps they want. So say you only want them to use Facebook and Twitter and Angry Birds, and that's it. That's all they can put on it. Now, one thing, people are complaining it's only got 512 meg of RAM. They're saying that's not enough. It's, <laughs> I guess if it's, if it's your work phone, no, it's not. The... My desire that I had been using up until last week, my HDD desire, has a, has 96 meg of RAM, yeah, wow. and I could still function day to day. I still could make the apps work with that yeah. if I just had to be smart about how I was managing them. So uh, it's four gig of on board storage, which is fine, and a micro SD, which is good because it lets you go up to 64 gig. So look for 149 bucks. Um, You'd give it a go, even if you don't put a SIM card in it. Just even if you just use mm. it on Wi-Fi, yeah, uh, you know, not a problem. You can it'd be perfect for kids to play games in the back of the mm. car. Two thousand milliamp hour battery. You're probably going to just 
going off personal experience with that configuration, you're probably going to get, say you're playing a game, you probably get about four hours out of it full, you know, full time playing a game. So it's not horrible, but also because it will has a standard USB uh, mini USB port, you can also buy expansion batteries. So if you can keep the kids entertained with the headphones, yep. you know, so, well, that's right. so yeah, well, I think it's great. Yeah, like my old uh, Samsung Galaxy S, the first generation of the three. Yeah, well, four now. But, uh, yeah, I'll give that to my daughter, and she loves it. She just plays it all the time. She's, you know, I created a, I created a Google account uh, with just, yep. like, um, just whatever at gmail.com, just created one, and so logged into the Play Store, you know, no credit card, obviously, and she goes to the Play right. Store. She can down, she knows how to download the free stuff. Uh, she goes and the, crazy. The yeah. good thing is with two, when you set up an email account, obviously they've got an email account then they can yep. use, but also but they don't. you can set the phone to stay, res, res, say, restore on reset. So if the phone wigs out or they've installed something that's playing havoc with it or they've just got too much stuff on it and it's got too slow, all you have to reset it, sit on the bench for an hour, it'll upload all the apps again, and it'll put them all back the way they were. Yeah. You know, so... That's it's, good, you know. Yeah, it's good. Look, yeah, I'd be interested to see if anyone, if anyone does get, get one of those. Yeah, give us a, give us yeah, a bell. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd be, bell. I'd be really curious. Yeah. Um, All right. Even as a cheap, a cheap business phone to give to your, to your uh, sales reps or whatever people who generally drop phones all the time, you know, workshop mechanics, things like that. You know, hmm. be perfect for that sort of thing. Hmm. All right. Now, uh, so before we move on, yes. well, was there any fallout or any follow up on the story we had about that Coke and dude a couple of weeks ago, where he was had those phone plans? Well, apparently they're all they're all the rage. They're, yeah, so they're, <laughs> they're legit. Fair minutes. income, yeah. Yeah, right. the, yeah. Well, I haven't heard anything to the contrary, and all the reports now they're not saying, "Oh, well, we all got it wrong." They're all saying, "Yeah, well, you can get it with Kogan who resells Telstra." So, um, okay. mm. yeah, so he's going hard. How they hooked a Telstra resell deal is. Is beyond me. Given Telstra's reputation for not reselling stuff. Yeah, I know. Well, but but, but that's so what Telstra really had to sure. do. Is it? They they wanted to resell part of their band because they're moving out of that spectrum. So probably made a bit of sense. Yeah, to, I guess. To resell it, they're not reselling their four G or anything. They're only reselling their their crappy, crappy crap, crappy oldy band. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's sufficient for for most people, you know. Oh, look, it's just probably as fast as. What the three G and everything you're getting off Optus and whatever, I think it was what it was just similar speeds, wasn't it? What one and a half down yeah, or something? Wasn't, and wasn't it wasn't far. Great. I mean, it, it wasn't Telstra peak speeds, but it was certainly, man, you know, certainly usable speeds. There, there was nothing mm. wrong with it. Yeah. Now, just while mm. we're sticking, I'm actually just trying to find, but I, I'm just going to their homepage and I cannot anywhere find anything about their phones, their phone, uh, the plans, plans. Yeah, well, I'll it, have a quick look anyway. in the articles. In the articles about this uh, phablet, they were all carrying on about them. So I, I, you've got to take it as you read it. Now, while we're sticking with phones, now I got an email through the week. Leon, how you doing? He's in the UK and he sent a story in. Good work. Now over there, a iPhone user has been hit with a nineteen thousand nineteen thousand pound bill from their Telco Orange for excessive internet usage after a fault with the mobile. Now, Chris. Well, I won't say his name. It's in the article if you want to know what his name is. So this guy, Chris, 26, thought it was a joke when he was when he was cut off without warning. Apparently, it was caused by a glitch, which sent and received huge amounts of data. Now, the telco tried to take money out of his account, but the bank blocked the transaction, obviously, because he probably didn't have 19, 19K there. And the company says it will scrap the charge if the phone manufacturer confirms the problem. Now, the problem appears to have been caused by a fault, which meant the iPhone started sending and receiving large amounts of data in error. He asked for the rogue iPhone to be switched off, but when it was off, it continued to automatically send and receive large amounts of data. So a bid to stop the problem by restoring the factory settings had no impact either. So what a rogue little phone that was. So anyway, apparently, um, I think he, he, they, they agreed to, at the end of the story, the, the, uh, the uh, upshot of the whole story, was they agreed to drop some of the fee, some of the bill, but they still want to, they still want to charge him three hundred pounds. So because that, not it did not end there. It said they would still be charging him a cap bill of three hundred pound. He claims that when he told the mobile phone uh, company that he would not be forking out cash beyond his normal billing amount, he was warned the heavy 
backhanded response. His partner added, Chris was advised that the £300 was simply not up for discussion and that he must pay up. We were told the failure to do so would mean that they would be sending a, a bailiff round for the full amount of the original bill. Oh, what's going on over there? Ooh, bloody UK. And muck things. around over there. No, they don't, do they? Bloody orange telcos. <laughs> that should be yellow. Now, all right, what else, Shane? What do you got? What do you got going? <clears throat> Pick one just, from the... Just quickly, Ooh, I yeah. found the uh, Kogan, the Kogan uh, mobile um, plans. plans. Yes. The, uh, they're all prepaid. The 30-day plan is $30. Uh, with unlimited calls, unlimited text, and six gig of data per month. <laughs> yeah, the 90-day right. plan is $80, unlimited calls, unlimited text, and six gig per month. And the 365-day, so the one-year plan, is $300, unlimited calls, unlimited text, and six gig per month. Or a data-only plan for two gig is $10 a month. Now, but does it say there what the th- or theoretical speeds would be? 3G, yeah. But I think they're pretty, um, pretty it, low. Well, if you look at the coverage, they've got a coverage um, map and it says that 3G... I did just read it. Uh, I can't remember now. It did say somewhere. But wouldn't I it think be, it said... Wouldn't it be the same as Telstra if uh, they're reselling it? It would be the oh, 3G so. network. I think it did say average speed was... Two and a, two meg or something, two and a half meg. Right. Which yeah. you know is it's, perfectly it's, fine for for that, especially okay. for that price. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You that's know. right. Like, geez. Yeah. Thirty that. bucks a month, unlimited calls, unlimited text, and six gig, six gig of data. I mean, mm, that's you not know. Too bad. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's amazing how these deals come about, isn't it? Like, how do they, you know, what did what did Kogan offer, and and how, how can he get it? How he, he's bought in bulk, obviously, but how? Yeah, he's obviously. What he'd obviously be relying on people, say, not using the uh, the full allotment or well, unlimited. You know, they're not using the say. He, he's probably done his sums. He said, okay, well, the average person's yeah. going to use so much, so many minutes a, a month, and blah blah blah. And then he's got a. Uh, if you're going overseas, he's got an international roaming pack for an extra fifteen dollars a month, which is unlimited call, unlimited texts. Yeah, nice. Oh, there's got to be asterisk or three that one for sure. I can't find. There's some fine print, but nothing you would normally expect to find. There doesn't seem to be anything unusual about it. Mm. Okay. All right. Now, where where were we up to? Let's go and see if Shane's got something else. I think we might have we might have talked about all your show. We might have pinched him off you. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, took me one about the um the electric cars making noise. That's I've right. Done... <laughs> I haven't even looked at your show notes. It's not my fault we've got good taste. How's, um... <laughs> exactly. Tell me what's happening. I'll, I'll do the one about the teenage kid. Yes, please. All right, so a teenage boy who jokingly threatened to blow up Sydney Airport on Twitter yesterday... <laughs> good idea. ...was given the shock of his life when he was uh, met by federal police in Melbourne Airport. Anthony... <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> Anthony, um... Something. Yeah, something. Uh, was uh, was escorted off Jetstar flight in front of his parents by an Australian Federal Police officers when um, it reached the gates at Melbourne yesterday afternoon after he posted a string of threatening tweets on the social network uh, networking website. And he goes on to give um, a whole bunch of examples of the tweets that he um, sent. He got a reply from one of his friends, sort of saying, you know, giving him a heads up, saying, you know, you shouldn't really be doing this. You're gonna, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> and um, and then, oh, yeah, dear. sure enough, um, by oh. the time we got to Melbourne, um, boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Now, uh, he, yeah, like he's, what, him, he got, he, he's 17 years old, so he would have been, oh, well, what? He, I suppose Aware he was, of what he was doing. Yeah, he would have. I was just gonna say, how old was he? Uh, September 11. But he probably would not have remembered that too much, maybe. But, but anyway, he should have known that. You don't go around doing that sort of crap. Everyone knows. Well, you do, but you just don't tell people. Yeah. You <laughs> didn't up. tell him. I mean, got the, the stupid part is if you're going to do something like that, and this is the, the, you know, the stupid part about it at the end of the day, if you're going to do something like that, you wouldn't announce it anyway. So, so under the Transport Security Act. Not a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, under the uh, uh, Transport yeah. Security Act, threatening to bite the airport can result in jail time. I don't know if he's 17. Mm. But uh, maybe, maybe that's t- that's pretty yeah, serious yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, kitty jar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's but also f- it's, I mean, it's no different than pointing a laser pointer at a aircraft pilot. That can put you in jail too. Yeah, 
Yeah. There's another guy uh, in the UK. He was convicted of sending menacing tweets after he took to social networking site to vent his frustration over a snow closure in 2010. He said, what did he tweet? Or he Facebook crap. What's that? Robin Hood Airport is closed. Robin Hood Airport? What the hell is oh, that? that one. You've got a yeah, w- that's in the UK. Got a, right? You've got a week and a bit to get your uh, shit together. Otherwise, I'm blowing the airport sky eye. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's he just was, crazy. I remember that thing. And the funny thing was they didn't know who he was. So there was a massive uh, big Twitter campaign where everybody was just tweeting, I am Spartacus. Oh, that's and right. That's like, right. Yeah. And it went on for like three months and they had such a hard time finding this guy because yeah. everybody's like, no, get I over am. it, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But look, you, look, uh, look, I don't, I, I don't disagree with, you know, coming down hard on this sort of stuff. It's for, it's for your own safety, you know. You can't have people go, look, one of these guys might be serious, you know. So you gotta, you got you to gotta get cracking, I reckon, get cracking. Now, um, Microsoft reveals Windows 8 sales figures. Yes, they've, they've come out and uh, they haven't told us how many... Surface of their sold, but they've sold us. Tell us how many Windows 8. Yeah, the thing that everybody actually wants to know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft <laughs> has sold 60 million licenses and upgrades for Windows 8 since the 10 weeks since its launch. Now, this little graphic I've put up for the lounge it doesn't include Windows 8 because it's just, it may just be four. Uh, it came out. But as you can see, it just gives you a bit of a market breakup of the operating systems on out there in the wild. Now, look, I can't actually read that because I'm on a really small screen here. Mac but OS, Windows XP 36, I'm assuming that's percent. So it'd be yes. 36% for Windows XP, 40% for Windows 7 so as of this, whenever this October was. October 2012. Uh, October, October 26th. Mm. So, so Windows um, is- And then Windows Vista was 5%. And then Mac OS... Uh, Mac OS 10.6 or 10.6, 10.7 and 10.8 combined is about 6% and uh, iPad is 3.5 and iPhone's 2.5. So th- this, and then yeah, so others par- is 7%, Android 7%. No, it does include Windows 8. Oh, does it? <laughs> 0.35 of a percent, but that was, that was a, yeah, must well, have after. been just on launch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, uh, Blackberry. This- Point one seven. <laughs> oh, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> so this puts it in line with Windows Seven, apparently. So if you want to try and draw a draw a uh, a comparison between the seven and eight, uh, this, this these figures are actually in line with Windows Seven, which averaged nineteen point four million sales for um, uh, per month in its first nine months of the of the when it hit the market, uh, and that was when the PC sales were running lower than they are today because of whatever reason, the economy, who knows. Industry analysts have noted that the majority of Windows 8 licenses have been sold to hardware partners. So, which means um, uh, Fujitsu Fujitsu and Acer. They've reported difficulties in reselling Windows 8 products to businesses and consumers. So, there you go. Now, oh, look, the big big Apple story. We can't can't have a week without an Apple story. The Apple app downloads 40 billion, 40 billion times. An app has been downloaded, and that's not re-downloaded. That's, I think, as far as I can tell, that is like their unique downloads. The number, which does not include repeat or updates downloads, is equal to nearly six downloads for every man, woman, and child on Earth. So despite this, Apple says there are more than 500 million active Apple Store accounts. More than 20 billion of that 40 were downloaded last year, 2012. So things have... Going crazy. Um, 40 billion times, yeah. I was just looking at the Android one, and um, they're up to 11.5 billion. So, given the, you know, they're behind they reckon, a little bit. I think they reckon that Android is going to hit the, is it the, is it, wouldn't be the billionth app. Is it the billionth app? app? Yeah. Yeah, the actual app. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So they reckon that Android is actually going to hit the, or even though Apple has more apps now, but by the end of the year, they reckon Android's going to actually hit the billion first before yep. Apple. Yeah, so that's a lot, isn't it? That, that is huge. Now, where else are we, go, we going over here? Oh, look, I'm just keeping with the Windows 8 because i just got one more story here. It's about, remember, the, they're discounting the Windows 8 at the moment? Mm-hmm. We've got three weeks. It ends in three, well, is it? Yeah, three weeks. End of January. 
So Microsoft Pro 8, Microsoft Windows 8 Pro upgrade discount will, will expire at the end of the month. So it's set to expire January 31st. Pricing, prices are download. What? Prices download. Uh, all right, so at the moment, you're buying them for $39.99 to download or for $69.99 for a DVD, right? Now, the DVD-based Windows 8 Pro upgrade carries a suggested retail price after the 31st of January of 200 bucks. So get it now, download at 40 or wait and pay 200 Pretty much that's now what Now, that's saying. the Pro, yeah? Yes, that's So right. what's the difference between the Pro and the other one, the Home or whatever it is? Um, media, media center, isn't media it? center, I think. Yeah. yeah, and doesn't it have uh, some sort of networking domain characteristics that the home one doesn't? Something like that, I think. Oh yeah, so Pro wonder, probably um, supports Active Directory. So I wonder how much the uh, just the standard one is then. Although, given that they were giving away Media Center upgrades, realistically, it should be the same price. <laughs> so also expiring. Is the new? Oh, I can't. I can't read. I need my glasses. Where's my glasses? Also, <laughs> also expiring is new Windows Seven PCs. Oh, that's right. Okay, so you remember if you bought a Windows Seven PC, uh, you can upgrade to Windows Eight Pro for fifteen dollars. That's also expiring. So okay, in the Australian Microsoft Store, you can only get Windows Eight Pro. Right. You can't get. Any other version of it, and it's uh, yeah, forty bucks. Yeah. Unless you're a student, then you can of course get the student version. But at the moment, the uh, the student version is dearer. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> so it's Andy. You, you might as well just get the pro and be done with it. I would have thought it would have been <laughs> at least the same price. I don't know about dearer. Um, yeah. So also, so, look, there's other deals from Microsoft that are all expiring at the end of the month. Uh, look, if you want to know what those other deals are, there are others around. Just hit the uh, AussieTechHeads.com.au show notes, find that story, link to it, and it'll it'll carry on with a bit more. So also, the Windows 8 Developer Preview of September 2011, the Consumer Preview of February 2012, and the Release Preview of May 2012 expire January 15. Now, after that date the free previews will automatically restart every one or two hours. Happy days. So you don't want to get caught up in that. So, well, that's um, what Windows 7 did. Yeah. Not if you're trying to do a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Just do it quick. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> you're on a time limit. You don't have a choice. Random restarts. But, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's going on over there. All right. Uh, what else um, have we got? Also, just while we're talking about software and, and things like that, um, Adobe is giving away, because they've ditched their update servers, Adobe is giving away their older uh, CS suite. So Photoshop, um, Illustrator, Dreamweaver, SoundCloud, the CS2 and CS3 stuff. Right. Uh, they're giving it away. You can download it directly off their website. What, the you full have to version? hunt around occasionally. Yep. Um, occasionally you have to hunt around for links because their website goes down because it's getting hit so much. Why are they but, giving them away? Uh, basically what they've done is they've turned off their their servers for the identification of those products. Um, so there's now no way of authenticating them. So right. they figured, well, the best way to, to get people interested in them is to give them away. Now, the CS2 stuff, I'm just actually looking through my downloads because I downloaded them the other day when I, when I saw it while they... Before that, I don't know if they're going to ditch the offer or not, so I decided to give it a go. Um, but uh, yeah, it was all CS2 and some CS3 stuff. Um, well, that's a good. That's a good. To little, be honest, I mean, little find. Yeah, I was going to say we use here, like for Son with all her photo editing and stuff. We use um, like Photoshop Five or something. And to be honest, when you go back to two and you use it. 95% or 98% of the things you would use yeah, uh, yeah. is still there. There's there's no difference. Un unless you're a professional. Um, well, I've got CS Photoshop CS3 because um, I bought that a while ago now, and that's all I use. I don't need nothing. I'm not a professional yeah. photographer or anything. I don't need to, you know, bring the hue up and bring the contrast down. We well, can do all that all anyway. Well, but, yeah, I know, but, you know, I don't need to do all the – well, whatever it does. I think you do animation now, can't you? There's a few things like with... Yeah. There's some of the stuff with uh, 
what's the is it what's the um not Dreamweaver. I'm trying to think what they're giving away. They're giving away Dreamweaver, Photoshop, um, Fireworks. Yeah, um, Lightroom elements and something else. Flash. And the video editor, which is uh, Premier. what's the video editor? Not Premier. Dreamweaver. Premier. 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 Yeah, they're giving away that. And one of the only restrictions with that is in its default format, it doesn't handle high def stuff. But that's not a problem. You can just upload a couple of or download a couple of. Uh, add-ons for it and, and it's not a problem so yeah if you go to the dreamweaver site and uh also the adobe site or best yet just search google for it um i'm actually going to go back through my twitter feed and see if i can find the the original link but um mm. so yeah, i have if a you, question if... <clears throat> yeah i have a question um they offer upgrades for, well, not free but like cheaper than the full product yep so isn't there a potential there where you can get a free earlier version and then qualify for the upgrade to the later version? Yeah, I mean, that becomes irrelevant to a point because you would go to, well, once you've upgraded like five levels, it would have been cheaper to buy it probably first out, first time anyway. But if you wanted to go to, say, um, CS3, for example, yeah, here we go. If you go to, thanks, uh, PA, if you go to uh, adobe.com slash downloads slash cs2 underscore downloads um it brings up the whole list of them but if you wanted to just go to say cs3 then yeah that would probably be a, a thing but I, I think last time i checked with adobe products you couldn't do one step you couldn't go from cs2 to cs5 okay. or cs6 what's that you link? had to oh, okay. that link incrementally again. um i'll throw it in the uh the hangout for you but basically it's um Let's say it again it for, for the listeners. Adobe Adobe.com slash downloads slash CS two underscore downloads. Um, I'm just so yeah, if you do that. But that's uh, right. Like, look, if if you're not sure if you want to use a product, it's certainly a good way to download it, trial it, see mm. if you're gonna use it. But like, yeah, like even stuff. Uh, hopefully, I'm gonna have a look at that because uh, I, I really need fireworks. I really would like to get fireworks, uh, and even Illustrator. You know, like I've got, I've bought, I bought a few things off the internet, and uh, although I can use part of it, I can't use the other part of it because they're all in in I don't know some different format that I haven't got the program for. And I wish I had the, mm. it's some like PowerPoint or something, but it's an Adobe See, thing. But designer, Adobe Premiere Pro Two, Adobe Photoshop Elements version 5, Photoshop CS2, InDesign CS2, InCopy, Illustrator, Go Live, Audition, Acrobat Pro, and Acrobat oh. Standard, Acrobat, and Creative Suite. So mm, nice. there you certainly go, Shane. enough of a range there. <laughs> Shane, go and get that Audition. That's what you need. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. That, that's not a silly idea either if you're starting off. That's Actually, I grabbed the Audition, and there's also a Loopology Add on there, which is all the special effects and, and everything like that. Mm. Yeah, good. And what's the other one? Uh, After Effects. I wonder if that's in there. That's, After that's, Effects? Oh, that's, no. good. that's good. That's more of a recent. <laughs> all right. All right. Now let, let's move on. So if you want that, go to where Will just said and go get it. If you didn't get that link, replay the replay the podcast. And if you still didn't get it. Adobe. Adobe.com and search for CS2 and it should be the first link. Right. If you still didn't get it, uh, tweet him at Mr. Tomkinson or email him at will at aussietechheads.com.au. All right, Shane, did you have any more stories? What else did you have in there? The only other one that um, while we were throwing around stats and all that kind of stuff, I had a story where Facebook mobile user accounts um, have been revealed. There's a big long story about it and they've got graphs and all that kind of stuff, but essentially all the saying is there's 192 million Android, 147 million iPhone, 48 million iPads and 56 million Messenger um, users out there using uh, the mobile. Really? Facebook. What's Messenger? Is that, wow. Is that Microsoft Messenger? Microsoft Messenger. Well, they're going to be no, no, it's, um, no, 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 no. There's um, a Facebook app that's just called oh, Messenger. Facebook and Messenger. All that oh, right. Yeah, Facebook Messenger, yeah. I was going to say, Messenger's had its day. It's, it's getting the can yeah. in March or something. That's what I thought. Yeah. Except for China, apparently. China's keeping it. Yeah. They, they, I don't know why. <laughs> that's what Chinese do. Hi to all our Chinese listeners, if, you're, if we're allowed through the <laughs> firewall. All right. Now, and, oh, okay, I've got another story. 
before we before we finish up. Now, how's this? I don't know if anyone out there likes Lego. I didn't mind it when I was a kid. But Lego, I thought this was a very interesting story until I saw the picture of it. Now, Lego is set to announce a new $336 Mindstorms EV3 kit will have the ability to talk to your iPhone iPad, iPod Touch through Bluetooth wireless connections. So this means so they so you can build a robot, okay, and you can talk to it through your iPhone. So this means Lego builders can use the device as remote control so their robots or create simple programs that are then set that are then sent to the robots to control their actions. In the kit, Lego includes the blueprints for a snake robot that uses its eyes to sense if someone is close to its head, in which case it strikes. Now, you want to see a picture of the snake robot that you can build and control with your iPhone? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> I think it that needs was a, worth the wait. I know. I think it needs a skin. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I suppose, look, if, you, if you're into that sort of stuff, yeah, if you're into that mm. sort of stuff, it'd be good. But um, it looks, sorry, a bit, bit lame. <laughs> but, you know, if you're into that sort of stuff. I'm going there in um, October. Snake Valley. Gonna have a look at Legoland when I'm on oh, holiday. Right. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yes, yeah, go and um, build one of those snakes. Now, any more? Will anything else? I've got one more little f- furry story to finish up with, but um, anything tech related? I got a couple. One just quickly on another uh, Android. Just this new Samsung has uh, an. Uh, they... <laughs> I'll let you do the math. Samsung has announced a new eight-core CPU. Okay. Right. It's called the. Exynos 5 Octa, and it uses a little big processor, or big little processor. Now, a big little processor basically extends the life by changing the way it uses the CPU. It has two different CPUs. It has four A15 cores for the high performance and four A7 cores for the low performance. So we have an 8-core CPU with a 5-octa chip, which has 15, four 15A cores and four A7 cores. There you go. That's got a few cores, hasn't it? <laughs> so basically, what they're trying to say is it's it's an eight core board with mm. two four core processors on it, one high end, one low end. So when you're just doing basic surfing, um, you know whatever you're using the the A seven core processors for the low end stuff. Yep. When you switch to video editing or recording or or pro, high high intensive processors, it switches to the A fifteen cores. Sweet. Um, the, and the reason that they do that is they can claim if you're just using low-end applications, uh, you can cl- save up to 70% in okay, your battery life yeah, right, um, right. by switching between the cores. So it means that if the difference is, you know, between being able to watch a video for two hours or being mm. able to watch a video for, you know, four hours. Mm. So Yeah, that's pretty um, tricky. So that's yeah. good. That's pretty tricky. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is quickly too... Finally, the whole uh, the whole holodeck thing is starting to happen. Hmm. Microsoft at CES just announced a a, a Lumi room. Right. <laughs> um, it's basically a technology that turns the entire room around the TV into an extension of the screen. So basically, what happens is you've got your normal you know plasma TV or whatever up there with your main focus of the game on there, and then using uh, it uses the um, the Xbox and the what's the thing called? The uh, Connect. Uh, yeah, that's it. The Connect. Um, and it uses that to sense what's going on. And basically the screen is still as you would see it, but the whole wall, like use the projector obviously, and the whole wall behind the TV is outside of your peripheral vision that you see on the screen. So basically it lights up the entire wall um, as one big as one big sort of deal, but it focuses on the, on the on the TV screen. So yeah, that's pretty um, pretty nifty. So basically, the next step from that is a holodeck, I reckon. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, but there, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. There is look, there is a YouTube, so, there is YouTube stuff up there, so you can have a look at that. Um, just so uh, I just uh, used, uh, sorry. Sorry, Glenn. <laughs> I just gonna say I just searched uh, Microsoft Holodeck and found a couple of responses. So yeah, sorry, go show. Yeah. You. I was gonna say so it uses the uh, Connect camera, which is I thought only functional for yeah. like taking photos. Yeah, yeah, it uses the Connect camera photo. to figure out what you're looking at. Like it, it watches you and it um, 
it figures out from where you are your peripheral and what your peripheral will see on this wall when you set all the parameters and stuff. So it works out. Say you've got, you know, say you've got a 50 inch TV and you've got 200 inches worth of wall space. Well, the Connect figures out where you're sitting and what you're going to see the TV and then what you're going to see projected on the wall around the TV. So it can, depending on where you're sitting, depends on where it, it how it sets up the rest of the room. So, yeah, you can how does it project awesome. the picture on the wall when it doesn't have a projector? Well, a projector. <laughs> yeah, you just use a projector. Oh, but separate, what happens? So a separate thing, yeah. Well, there what are... happens is it, um, it, yeah, you have a normal projector set up, but it doesn't project on the TV screen. So, the TV screen picture is not interfered with. Um, it just projects around everything you would normally see around that screen yeah. is projected. So if you're if Sorry. you're flying into a planet on the screen, you can have uh, say if you can imagine a um, a star a moving star field in your peripheral on the walls. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. So um, yeah, yeah. But just Google it or just look. I've just put, I found a YouTube. I'm just playing it now for those on the video. Uh, but if you're on the audio, you can watch the video and have a look at that or whatever you want to do. Google it. Or whatever. It's pretty awesome. It really is. Like it, it basically just extends. Like, let's for example, you blow somebody up with a grenade or with a you know, or whatever, and they be, they go out of the screen. Well, now you can actually watch them go up and out and around. You know, so mm. they don't sort of become a disappearing entity. Yeah. But yeah. it does show you the power of the Xbox 360. How powerful it is because now it's generating two entirely separate. Um, graphical sets basically it's generating the one that you're watching on your TV and then it's generating everything else as well mm. yeah, well it must be pretty powerful inside that little machine eh? yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah well look, my, my last story probably ties in well with that one actually now did you know <laughs> that the UK still has 13,000 black and white TVs how's that, <laughs> how's that? I think my dad's still got them too the number of licenses issued each year, now, obviously in the UK, they, you've got to pay for your TV, you've got to have a license. Uh, the number of licenses yep. issued each year has dwindled from 212,000 in the year 2000 to a total of 13,202 monochrome licenses were in force at the start of 2013. How do you like them, eh? 13,202 Brits have still got the old monochrome. Why would you have one? A black and white TV license costs forty nine pound a year, and a colour license costs one hundred and forty five pound a year. That's, That's why, why you have you would have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe but, that they do that, eh? Like, I can't believe. Well, that... that's because all their don't forget they don't have commercial TV. Like they all their BBC One, BBC Two, through to what is it, BBC Eight or whatever it is now. Mm. It's like our ABC. It's all funded, and that's how they fund it. It's all. It's all pay TV, but you pay for the privilege of watching TV and not watching ads. Yeah. yeah. So was, we, we pay for the privilege or we don't pay for the privilege of watching TV with ads and then we also pay for the privilege of watching TV with ads. So we get screwed twice. But they do have commercial channels, don't they? <laughs> Over there. Um, I'm sure they Not do. on the regular, not that that licensing covers. I think their commercial channels are all like their, what we call pay TV, as far as I'm aware. but Right. Well, we might have to talk to Leon about that one. So um, yeah, I'm not, I only I only have a basic understanding. I only yeah found out a while a couple of years back that you needed a, a separate license for your TV. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't need one. You can still watch the TV without it. But if you get busted, they if got, they do an audit, but they got little vans that roam the streets. I don't know if they still have, but they yeah. they roam the streets and they can detect your TV, the frequency and stuff. And they go, well, we detect three frequencies. He's paid for two. Let's go in. We're in. Get knock the door yeah, down. Pretty much. Yeah. But I think these days, like, you'd almost be silly these days with the advent of the internet. You know, why would you pay for a, a TV subscription almost now? It's you know, it doesn't seem feasible. Mm. But they got no choice. They've got to. Well, not if you don't watch TV. What about yeah? What about why couldn't you have a, a monitor? That's you, what I mean. Yeah, why is, download you know, your stuff. You watch everything online. Yeah, you say, well, I've got a really big monitor, sir. Yeah. And it's for well, my... it's a 50-inch TV, but I don't watch TV on it. It's my monitor, sir. 
And yeah. there you go. All right. Well, our, our plasma is <laughs> our plasma is a glorified monitor. It only sees cricket. I think it's the only thing it watches outside of the computer stuff. So. Oh, the cricket. <laughs> oh, the one day is there on tomorrow. Yeah, they start down in the MCG. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, you're going to love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. All right. What else is there? I think we're finished. Nothing else, Shane? Nothing else to... No, I'm done. All right. Now, we're going we're gonna to record some more with Garth pretty soon in the, in the coming weeks, so look out for some more iOS app reviews. If anyone else wants to do an Android app review, you know, just a little two-minute thing or whatever, send them in. We'll, we'll, we'll put them on for sure. Uh, what else is there? I don't know. That's about it. Uh, look, if you go to the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, uh, you can download my little pile. I made a little pilot of, of my radio podcast, my little song music podcast. So it's a little pilot looking for feedback. I'll put it up on YouTube, on iTunes. Uh, so next week we might, I might just uh, tell you how to get it on iTunes. So, yeah, I'll do that this week. So, but if, if not, if you want to have a listen to it pre-iTunes, just go to the uh, Facebook, Aussie Tech Head Facebook page and download it from there. And uh, that's about all I think that I have for this week as well. Uh, nothing else is happening uh, except that's hot, very hot. So, um, yeah, good stuff. All right. So, Shane, we'll see you next week. Uh, yes, Glenn. Yes, that's I will be, nice, be Glenn. focused and, yes. and present. <laughs> and, yes. All right. And we'll, we'll see. Whoa, what's this? What's that? Oh, that's the bomb. That is storms that are just slowly starting to head this way. That's why it's getting more and more muggy. Oh, I see. Now, Will's just put up a... Uh, a screenshot of the bomb and the bomb is bom.gov.au and you can select your area and see what the rainfall well, is and there you go that to give you an example that's like gimpy up the top of the screen and like yamba evans head down the bottom so that front is going from gimpy to evans head mm. and a bit of a <laughs> bit of yellow in there bit of black that's good bit of red the yellow, yeah. So he hopefully, get, might actually get something out of this. Yeah, so you can see did the rain. Um, the rains are coming. I was gonna, did you see that they, um, the Bureau of Meteorology, had to um, develop or, or add a new category for the heat for um, anything over fifty degrees or something, like a new color? Yes. Really? Yeah, they put like a it's a purple color or sort of like a maroon purpley. Yeah, thing. whatever the the limit, whatever the limit was. Uh, they had to create another colour. So for for temperatures like say from forty six to fifty six, had to create another colour. <laughs> so I never never noticed that. There you go. There you go. Well, if you've noticed something that Will hasn't, you can email him and tell him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> You can email us all, in fact. Uh, Glenn, <laughs> Will, Shane, or Eric at aussietechheads.com.au. We can or... get us on the Twitter or what? Are you saying all for something? I was going to say, you can, you, why don't you just have an us all at Aussie Tech Heads? <laughs> well, maybe they want to go individually. All you guys. All you. Hey, you guys. Yeah, just use. <laughs> y- use. Y- Y-E-W-S. Use at Aussie Tech Heads. <laughs> dot com that are you <laughs> all right now you can follow me on twitter at aussie tech Ed's eric at eric with a k franco will mr tomkinson shane with a y 1973 and don't forget to follow the at aussie tech news for breaking news stories uh don't forget uh the radio aussie tech dot com that are you forward slash radio we've got shows the den i blind tech and of course this show if anyone else has got a podcast they want to be a part of that lineup of the radio send me an email and i'll tell you how to do it it's free why wouldn't you not do it you stupids <laughs> anyone interested <laughs> so and, and and my little not on the radio podcast anyone interested in doing indie music um we don't just have to do one show we can do a lot of shows because you know we can have uh subdomain it out so we could do blues uh, dot not on the radio dot net or you could have will will show at not uh, will show dot not on the radio there's a lot of dots in there isn't there I'm tired <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. There all shouldn't right. be no but I'm putting them in <laughs> I'm putting them in all right so until next week thanks will we'll see you next week too and um yeah I'll be here good stuff so if I don't like keel over from heat exhaustion. Yeah, well, we'll look after yourself up there because it is hot. And it's actually got hotter. It's 45 in my room now. Oh, I don't know how you do it. All right, well, we're going to go so we can so we can go jump in a cold bath and a cold shower. <laughs>
Now, so that's it. That's it. That's good. That's good. So thanks to everyone in the lounge. Thanks for everyone that downloads us and listens to us. And a uh, big hi to everyone that listens to us overseas. It's a, um, it's real good to know that you guys are out there as well. And, and glad that you enjoyed. So until next week, that's another episode of Aussie Tech Heads. We'll see you then. Check yous. See ya. See ya.